In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold replacement IDE cables for the original Xbox. So for anyone that has a hard-bodied original Xbox, you've learned that the original 40-wire IDE cable isn't always the best option when trying to upgrade your drive to something like a solid-state drive or a larger SATA drive when you need the adapter. And as such, getting replacement IDE cables like this 80-pin wire one from Cables Online that I recommend in my other Xbox videos is sometimes necessary. It isn't always necessary, but sometimes it is. But there's a lot of other benefits to upgrading to an 80 wire cable, and that's higher UDMA speeds for things like Serbios, Project Stellar, or uh, Titan BIOS that you just don't get with these 40 wire ones. So these are limited to UDMA 2. These ones get you up to UDMA 5 with a proper SATA adapter. But again, since these are not made specifically for OG Xbox, they're meant for old PC use, they aren't folded or designed to be perfect replacements. So sometimes folding them can be a challenge. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do this. So going back and looking at the original Xbox's IDE cable here, you can see that it is a keyed IDE cable, which is great since most modern replacements are going to be keyed and that's how you know where you need to plug them in. So typically in PC usage, this blue one would connect to the motherboard, but for our Xbox replacement here, this is actually going to go to our hard drive and we're going to put this side into the motherboard. IDE cables, um, they're not the direction that you play, some doesn't matter because pin 1 is on the same side and they're all keyed the same direction, so it doesn't matter which side you put in. The drives are selected as master and slave, so there you go. But as you can see with the original IDE cable, it has this bend and then it goes into the DVD drive and then the other part comes out the top, folds up and over, and into the hard drive. Now unfortunately with PC IDE cables, when you have the keyed side here for the DVD drive, the top side is where it goes into your motherboard, so that's a little bit different, and then this has to come up and under to get to your hard drive, and it's kind of a headache for some. Now it is quite possible with these replacement 24 inch IDE cables to get some really nice folds to get a nice clean finish with your cable work. And that is really essential. So the 24 inch ones are definitely the best size for this. The 18 inch ones can be a little bit tight and then you get some really nasty creases in them. And then the 36 inch ones are just a little bit too long but they work as well. So 24 inch is definitely the optimal size here. But let's go ahead and talk about how to do these folds here real quick. So. As you can see, it'll go into your DVD drive, motherboard keyed correctly, and then you can fold the HDD one here as needed. But let's grab our fresh cable here. And so again, the uh, black side here for this example is going to be what goes into our motherboard, followed by a DVD drive, and then the blue side is our hard drive. So. Once again, it is going to go into the DVD drive like this. So we just need to make a little fold like this to make it a triangle right underneath. So that way it shoots out from underneath our DVD drive. And you don't need to crease these. You just need to like give them just a tiny little press. They don't need to be completely folded and I dropped it. Awesome. But as I was saying, they don't need to be a complete crease, just a little, little press. That way it goes in the direction you want it to. And then you can fold it back under to kind of complete this triangle right here so that way it just has this nice little point in it and again just give it a little little tap there now the hard drive one will come up and over the DVD drive which we'll get to in a moment so let's go ahead and get the rest of this folded up here so we need to bring this part down so that way it comes up and under and that is what connects into our DVD drive the back of it right there and now let's focus on our motherboard and connector here. So it's going to go into the motherboard like this. So we need to essentially, sorry, this is really hard doing it one-handed, but we need to fold this over like this to get it to go this way. So we'll go ahead and do another triangle fold here, just about three fingers up about. It doesn't really need to be too precise, but it just helps with overall placement if you can get it closer the better to where the IDE port is on the DVD drive. So. 
just another little crease like that and then we just got to fold back under sort of like that to the point where it'll now kind of mirror that original IDE cable with the uh, couple of folds just like that and now to put it into practice all right so here we are inside the Xbox case so we're just going to plug the IDE cable in to the motherboard like so and as you can see it folds over and will go underneath the DVD drive for this end connector to plug into it and let's get this out of our way real quick but I'm just gonna go ahead and get the DVD drive received real quick alright so the DVD drive is now back in place we can see we have our IDE connector right here and we could just line it up with the DVD port right here the DVD ID uh, DVD drives IDE port right here and get it inserted and with that in place it leaves us with something that looks a little bit like this so you can see that it's just pretty neatly folded underneath not quite the neatest job since I was doing it one-handed but you can get this to like go underneath a little bit better but works for our purposes here so then it comes up and over the top right here and make sure that you don't get it caught on the uh, screw hole here because otherwise you'll damage your IDE cable if it's up and over it like that so it kind of just tucks in right behind the DVD drive like that and now we can fold it into place for our hard drive once we replace that just gonna go ahead and get the hard drive tray replaced here so I'm just going to set that down in here worry about running the power here in a second there we go so it goes in like that and I am using an SSD so it has this SATA adapter here and there we go so now there's two methods of doing this you could fold this cable into another triangle going underneath or over it doesn't really matter either way I prefer underneath so something like that and you can go to the same place where it holds the original one in place you have enough space with this one to do that and now you either need to go up or over again to get it to plug into the hard drive IDE port so for this one I'm just gonna go over again. and then we can fold it downward like this and just plug it right into the adapters IDE port and it is now all set and it will sit nicely and flat right inside there and isn't a big jumbled mess like a lot of other fold methods are so very clean doesn't cause any issues putting the system back together and just works really well and uh, also don't forget to plug your DVD drive back in now for the spirit of efficiency there is actually another way of routing an IDE cable like this for the original Xbox and it won't involve much of the underside folding so we're just gonna go ahead and plug a completely unfolded IDE cable into the Xbox motherboard here move that out of our way and now we're gonna reseat the DVD drive and we're going to do so with the IDE cable coming out the side of it right here because there is enough space between the shielding and the DVD drive for the IDE cable to rest and as such we could fold it over the top like this and then just do a single triangle fold I like that I'm calling these triangle folds like I don't know what else to call them but essentially it makes it so that the IDE cable sits on top of the DVD drive just like that and then we can plug this in into the DVD drive and this method is actually a lot nicer because the keyed part of the DVD drive one is coming from the top so then we can route this part back up over the top and it doesn't interfere with itself so it is actually a lot nicer method in that regard but I'm just gonna go ahead and get this attached real quick can't do it one-handed all right so with that attached you can kind of just try to straighten out the cable as much as possible like adjust that fold as needed right here so it's just a little bit more flat because you don't want too much bulk up here otherwise it'll make the case harder to close but as you can see the hard drive one can now just flip over the top you have full access to everything down here if you need it but just go ahead and reseat the hard drive tray real quick again just so we can uh, properly demo this there we go 
So once again, I'm using this IDE to SATA adapter. So just gonna plug that into this SSD so we can have better positional awareness of where our folds need to be. But now we could just fold this over. And again, we can use that same little clip that the original cable uses right here if desired. There we go. And so we could just crease that right there. And now once you get it in, we just need to make kind of an under fold here and try your best to line it up with the IDE port. But we need to do an under towards us fold and then an up and over because the keyed part is right there. And when we flip it over, it will line up into the IDE port of your hard drive or SATA adapter. And so once you get it all properly placed, you can just flatten it down, crease it in, so that way it stays where it needs to. So, as you can see, say the adapter in, IDE cable folds nicely over the top, and it hits that port, and we'll be able to put our case on with no problems, it shouldn't be too tall. And, as you can see, just kind of a much nicer folding process with the uh, less crinkling going on underneath the DVD drive. So either method works really well. Choose whichever one works best for your current cable setup. But just figured I would showcase just some of the uh, IDE cable folding methods available. But there we go. Now we could just throw the top back on. You'll see that it's not going to interfere with any of our screw holes here for system reassembly. But we could just slide that back over the top. All right. There we go. There we go. So, all nicely closed up. Cable's not interfering with anything, and this is all set and good to go. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative, and it helps you get your modded Xbox projects looking a little bit nicer with proper cable management. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like-dislike button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going as always. Y'all are the truest of champs. We could not do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.